How did it all start for you? What, how did you find out about this thing called a horse, this thing called racing, this, this, this industry? How did you find out about it? Well, I was fortunate enough. My, my grandfather trained, Russell Laird, and at that time my mom was assistant to... Welcome to the kitchen, I mean to the studio here at uh, Summerfeld Clubhouse. Kitchen all right, noise in the background. Right. They're obviously washing the dishes. There must be strong dishes too, already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way they're banging them around. Goodness gracious me. Okay, we've got a, a very special guest in the studio or in the kitchen or in the uh, clubhouse. None other than Mike Shaw, who's a, a horse behaviorist. We had Glenn Redgrave on some time ago, and it's now nice to touch base with Mike. Mike, welcome. Thanks, guys. Good to be here. Yeah. yeah. Are you a behavioralist or a horse whisperer? Yeah, you know, we don't do much whispering to horses because it's all no, just yeah, them, So man. it's all behavioral, <laughs> behavioral stuff. Yeah. yeah, horse behaviorist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So ho- that's interesting. Good question. Well, well done to you. Ten points in the opening batting because uh, <laughs> there's a difference between whispering and behaviorists. Blocked. Um, so yes, we've got Mike Shaw in studio with us, uh, and of course my bushy head friend Andrew. Who's? Are oh, you got a job interview today? You dress so smartly. <laughs> Jeez, I had to put some long pants on. She said, "I had to t- take a bit all, cold. all the miff off my shoes too." Yeah. This yeah. Uh, he's got to come to the <laughs> office for a meeting today. So uh, okay. That's why he's looking so shocking. Shocking. Just to try shocking. and get him. I, I don't know what's going to happen to his car, Mark, because <laughs> yeah. his car doesn't normally go past <laughs> this turn off. <laughs> so he's going to go down to Gravel. So that's going to be we expect a bit of rain later. But it's wonderful to have you all with us and. Uh, to talk about the uh, Gold Circle podcast and to talk about Mike and his job. And of course, we've got a feast of racing on Sunday, which we'll talk about in a moment. But quickly, some news. Uh, Mike, you're welcome to join in, add, subtract. You know the story. Cool. Make yourself at home. It's a very relaxed atmosphere. If we're talking rubbish, tell us. Tell us, yeah. Well, then he won't be saying anything because we never well, talk rubbish. We're <laughs> so, <laughs> so good. Oh, yeah. Now, if we see where Endlova was our guest last week, we got some wonderful, wonderful feedback. We got some wonderful hits. Not hits in the parking lot with the fists. We got some wonderful uh, computer hits. And Paul Lafferty contacted me. He said he really was uh, proud and, and, and thankful. Fantastic. That was, yeah. And he was very eloquent, too. You know. Informative, too. Yeah. Informative. And he, yeah, he obviously works very hard and he knows his stuff. Huh? You have uh, would have done some, have you, you know, for where of course, yeah. have you bumped into him or done some work with him or, or yeah. no? Top quality horseman. Very, very good guy. Yeah. Um, just couple of the short um, times we've met each other and seen each other, but yeah, um, puts a lot of effort in. The season's well underway. Uh, we've seen some fantastic racing. We, of course, had the uh, launch of four racing in, in, in Gauteng, mm. and we had some top quality racing there as well. Uh, so far, everybody's talking about Rainbow Bridge. Sure. What a performance that was. Yeah, I know. It, it was impressive. I, I thought it might be too short for him. But he's, it's the class, obviously, told yeah. I mean, he just put those two people, to, I mean, other horses to bed in a couple of strides. Mm. It was excellent run. There's lots of promotions that we must talk about on Tab Gold, the Tab Gold website, the betting site. Um, that site, I'd, I don't even need to push the buttons anymore for it when I go on to I just talk to the phone and it knows me. The, the Tab Gold <laughs> betting site, I, you know, it, it says, oh, no, not you again. <laughs> And uh, it's a great site. Uh, obviously, it's Gold Circle's betting site. Uh, easy to use, informative. That's the way to. Pl- that's that's the, the way to do it. But it's shocking, you know. I've had a, a betting account for about I don't know, close on twenty years. I yeah. don't think it's had any money in it well, for twenty <laughs> years. That's typical Andrew Harrison's stance, you know. He's got the account but no cash in it. Uh, but there's lots of soccer bets. Uh, plenty. Mm. Go onto the website and have, do you enjoy soccer, Mark? I enjoy soccer. I'm yeah. a Man United fan. Okay. Yeah. Strong. Strong till the end. Strong till the end. Okay. Strong till second place. Were you, were, you on the, were you on the field <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> last Sunday? <laughs> yeah. I've been called a bit of a Wayne Rooney before. Okay. Look alike. No, you look alike. Yeah, yeah that's true. Bald I wouldn't know. I don't know anything about soccer, so I can't comment. <laughs> you just wish you had Wayne Rooney's bank balance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay. That's so, true. Tab Gold, that's the place to, uh, to get your bets on. Now, also, just a, a thankful thanks again to Al Cahill uh, for the caps. We're not wearing them now, but we've been given some beautiful caps and some lovely uh, memorabilia from this lovely stud farm or, or pre-training farm, I should say. Al Cahill, managed by Tracy Willard, just here at Summerfelt. Tracy Willard, also, both of you know well, we all know well, yeah. phenomenal horsewoman. Yeah, she's been around a long time. She's, she's 
brought up and pre-trained some really nice horses. And that setup, I've been there. It's beautiful. They've redone the stable yard. It really looks magnificent. When did you last see a stable that's got uh, climate control in it? Mm. So you, if it gets too hot, it kicks in the fans and the air cons. It gets too cold, it kicks in the heat. It's all digitally done. Okay. Ash birthday just opened the windows. <laughs> 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 and last thing to talk about in the news department before we find out more about uh, Mike. Uh, or before we find out about Mike, is Anton Marcus injury, wow. another jockey that seems to be on the sidelines. Yeah, I think um, he doesn't like to talk about it. Anton always, always pretty secretive when it comes to those sort of things, but I believe it's quite serious. So mm. We'll see how he goes. Right, now we're going to focus on Mike Shaw, who is uh, the owner, sole owner of uh, Mike Shaw Behaviorists. You are the only man that works there, is that right? I, I've got two employees. Okay. I've got um, Milton, who is a handler at the start. He assists me. And then I've got a media man called Mike McKenna, who does my social media. Mike Shaw Horse Behaviorist. Yeah. Okay. They, uh, are they going to stop washing the dishes or are they going to carry on with the dishes? Well, I don't know. There won't be too many left the way they're banging them around. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> if they're going to break, I'd like them to break quickly so we can have a bit of silence. But now, Mike, the first question that I ask you will ask most people on, on the show is, if we go right back to the beginning, when you were a youngster, which was just the other day, <laughs> how did it all start for you? What, how did you find out about this thing called a horse, this thing called racing, this, this, this industry? How did you find out about it? Well, I was fortunate enough, my, my grandfather trained, Russell Laird, and at that time my mom was assistant to, to him. And I was of 18 months old when I climbed up my first horse's leg, a horse called Gundrift. My mom told me I got some pictures. So that was at Turf, uh, Newmarket um, then. So that's, my mom was an assistant, so not much time off. And not to bring the kids to, to stables. And I used to sit in the office and eat my pup and sauce with the nanny. And, you know, that's how I was brought up in the game. Um, so, yeah, I moved from Newmarket and went to Turfentine. And that was my playground. I loved it there. Yeah. Uh, so your mom is, is uh, sister to... Charles. Charlie, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, yes. Therese. 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 Let's get it right. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I will get it yeah. right to ask. I'll be getting a message from her. It's <laughs> lovely to be in touch with her. She's living now in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. She's lo living the life of luxury in Dubai, enjoying herself, which is good because she's she worked hard enough as an assistant. We know how hard that is. So, yeah. yeah, it's nice. She's in Dubai and loving it. And, and an astute horsewoman in her own right. Yeah, sure. I, I, I learned more from my mom than I learned from anyone else. You know, she's a phenomenal horse lady. She certainly had the results. Uh, you yes, remember the yeah, days when well she was here in Kwazulu Natal. She didn't have the strongest stringer, so yeah, she did well with what she did. She well, had. and then of course, assistant to uh, the the Nels and yeah. um, mm. for winner after winner after winner. Okay, so that's when it all started. Yeah. That's when it all started there. Um, obviously, that was I mean, th throughout my schooling career. I was at school in Joburg, and holidays would be at the track at you know early mornings. Mucking out stables. I was a groom to start off with. That's how, that's how I learned the basics. I would travel in the floats as a spare boy to the races, in the float with the boys, Val, wherever we went. And, um, and then as it, as it went on, obviously went high school and then came back after high school. I went overseas, I, I went overseas for a bit on the cruise ships. And then in 2008, I started at Jeff. Jeez, yeah. Okay. And, and I believe you, you did some time with, with uh, Melinda Toy. Yeah, so at, uh, when I worked for Jeff, I worked for Jeff for about two and a bit years. Jeff Woodruff. Jeff, Jeff Woodruff, Jeff Woodruff. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, no problem. Jeff Woodruff. Leave the plates alone. Mr. Sorry. Woodruff, the gov. Um, I worked for him for about two years, and in that time, I met Milan along the way. And Mr. Woodruff f allowed me to spend as much time as I came with Milan when he came, because I just, I was drawn to that. Um, we started, the first horse I ever helped Milan with was a horse called Lago Leader. I don't know if you remember him. Uh, very naughty and costed the Lago horse. And I started there. Every time Milan came, every two or three months, I would spend the afternoon with him, learn from him. And then after that, after a couple of months, I then, Milan would come and do the first couple of sessions, and I would then do the refreshing sessions after that, which right. then gave me a bit of, you know, um, of my own sort of value in that sort of space. And yeah, it went from there, and then just started getting more and more experience. That was in 2008, nine, yeah. Okay, so you've been doing it for... Yeah. Nearly a decade. Yeah. Well, over a decade. Mark, um, obviously when you're working with troublesome horses or working with horses, you generally, well, you, you have to have patience. Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, you see how dogs come to visit us? Every time want we the come, sausage. He wants the sausage and bacon, you see. Yeah. 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 Um, every time you work with horses, you've obviously got to be patient, quiet, calm, etc. 
are you like that in your life outside of horse racing? Are you are you generally a, a patient man? Are you with a human race? Are you patient? Are you are you like that with horses, or can you like all of us get a bit fired up? You got to be careful how you answer that one. Eh? <laughs> uh, I think I think I, I've learned to be more patient. I think it, with the the amazing thing with horses is they don't they don't betray you and stab you in the back and you know the things that humans do so it's easier to be more calm and relaxed with them yes, yes. but yeah, i would say I'm, I'm i'm more of a patient person to a point i think like everyone push me enough and then you might you know yeah, get 100%. a reaction yeah that's 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 that's, f that's a fair comment and very well answered because yeah it's it's you're right you're going to be patient uh, uh, what do they say about uh patience is a virtue pa that's <laughs> it patience is a virtue yeah. okay uh when you've got to deal with the difficult horse, I mean, how do you, how does, what's the process? Does the trainer phone you, so I've got a troublesome character here, one going to the pens or one going to the track? How does it all work to get the system, to get your business, to get you coming to see my horse? Yeah, so it will be a phone call from a trainer or an owner, depending. Um, owner will phone into a trainer will phone, more likely it's the trainer who has permission from the owner, and then they'll phone and say, Mike, listen, we've got a horse that we need you to work on. So I will then come to the yard, take the horse to the paddock and assess it for an hour, an hour or so, and do a paddock session, and then from there we'll formulate a plan. Uh, and, and what are you looking for then in that, in that hour time with you and the horse? You see if it's nervous, is it, does it rear, is it vicious? Yeah. Or is it, you're just trying to pick up all those things. Well, I'm trying to pick up what the behavior looks like without help yet. Okay. So, and in that time, I use the pressure halter technique which is Milan and I used and he taught me. So in that time, I will see the behavior and then try and correct the behavior on the pressure halter, get the horse to understand what I'm asking it to do. Because there's no use putting the pressure halter on and say, come, let's go in the pens. I've got to uh, give the horse an opportunity to understand what I'm asking it to do on the pressure halter. Because a pressure release is, is a fundamental way horses learn. So as much, I, I teach the horse then to move away from pressure whether it be pulling it forward, making it move back, sideways. And in the wild, if you see a horse sub in a submissive state, they drop their head and move backwards. So I'm trying to create that submission in that space of that hour, join up submission, and just iron out some of the behavioral flaws. How does that pressure halter work? So it works on three points. It's pressure on the pole, on the nose, and then on the head. Okay. Um, so what I'm training the horse to do is to move away from the pressure. So... Basically, it's a long rope. It's got three knots on it, and you put it on a sp certain way. So if I'm pulling the horse forward, now if you can imagine the horse is in front of me, and I'm pulling the horse forward, I'm pulling onto pressure on the pole. pole yeah. The only way for that horse to release the pressure is to come towards me. Okay. I'm not releasing the pressure until that horse comes. So if I, if I pull pressure, the horse waits until, until it comes, then I release the pressure. So I'm reinforcing that behavior that it must move away from the pressure. That helps me hugely when it comes to actually putting them in the, sto in the stalls. So that, that um, it's, it's now flavor of the month now, that, that uh, pressure mask. A pressure compression mask. mask. Compression yeah, that was my mask. next question. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? On that? I mean, I don't, I don't have the, science, the scientific data behind it, but from a practical point of view, in my opinion and the horses I work with, I must be careful as what I yeah, say. You but be careful, no, but you are yeah. entitled to an opinion. And I'm yeah. going to keep drumming that into everybody. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. entitled to an opinion as no, no, yeah. long as it's not malicious. So yeah, so I, of my opinion of the horses I've worked with, on a hot day, say Peter Marisberg on a Sunday and it's 28 degrees, in my opinion, those horses, all they want to do is rub that mask off their face. If you take a hand and rub their mask, give them a scratch, they nuzzle their head into you and they, they like enjoying that. Cause they, but yes, it does act on pressure points and it's supposed to release the serotonin to the brain to keep the horse mild. So I think there's definitely a place for it because I've seen horses use it and work and it works. Um, just for me, a horse that's over the top, that's not enough. You can use that, but that's not enough. enough. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. That's very good. Uh, well, you know, do you remember we, I went for months and months, and I, I, I think it might have, even if it's a little bit worked, about you know that we have to stop slating one another and the hate mail and all that, and it seems to have got a little less, and I drummed that uh, <laughs> drum for a long time. And now the next drum I'm going to be drumming is everyone's oh, entitled oh. to an opinion. Long as it's not malicious, long as it's not uh, pulling people apart. Like the other day, you wrote an article. You know, you're a hell of a nice guy. You're a very good writer, but I just didn't like your article. I'm entitled to that. Well, no, you aren't. Oh, aren't I? No, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few other bloody crit critics. 
<laughs> you know, it's it's yeah, you're entitled to an opinion. No, no, and, no. And, and, no, no uh, everyone's no. become very, and me. I, I was one of them. We become very thin-skinned, which is no, you can't be thin-skinned in this game. If you uh, if you you got to take the criticism. Sometimes I've mm. just got to the point now where I just ignore it. Yeah, yeah. It's unless, it's, unless it's a, a valid. Yeah, yeah well, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a difference between somebody saying you know that Oakland Andrew Harrison he wrote a terrible article. He's a dreadful man. He's a ghastly person. He's a crook. He's a bastard. Well, they're probably right, but anyway. I have a problem with that. But if somebody says, "Geez, Andrew's a great guy." His work is fantastic, yeah. but the article he wrote on Sunday, I didn't agree with his comments. Yeah. No, you're allowed that. You're yeah. allowed that. Yeah. I, I agree. So, anyway, um, let's go. Next is Sunday, uh, the 9th oh. of May, where we're going to talk about uh, <laughs> what we like. You've got a heck of a day. What's happening yeah. on Sunday? Yeah, I've got a. It's, it's back at Scottsville. You know, a couple of the sprints horses have been tuned up, ready for these days. It's, I, I, I love it. But it's, yeah, there's a bit of organizing and planning and a bit of pressure on. Um, I would once learned from Bonji that Anthony Del Pesce, that the only pressure is in tyres. Yes. So, <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, I've got a couple of horses in a couple of dis- different races, specifically the Sprint over 1100. We've got uh, Speed Point and Pray for Rain, who are two difficult cases. Uh, they're drawn on opposite ends. Pray for Rain went to the stalls this morning. This morning, yeah. And uh, how was it there? I was talking to Sean Veal, who said he, he sometimes he's got to close your eyes and look the other way. But how did it go? Yeah, he's... Um, He's a bit of a malicious horse, he, he, in a sense that when it gets there and the pressure's on, he wants to just get out of it. He'll do whatever it takes. So today was a re- really good session in terms that he came there all fired up and hot and bothered. And by the end of it, he was relaxed, standing in front of the pens, licking and chewing and just being, breathing, you know, and taking it all in. Because our, you know, f- first instinct for those horses is fight or flight. So he's a fight. He goes into fight mode and then it's flight. So what I want is to get him into that response zone so he can process what's going on so that on race day, when it is hopped up, I've got him all under control. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you control two horses in one race? Doing a lot opposite, of homework. Opposite sides yeah, of the Yeah, do pens. your homework. I, I mean, um, I, they've got to be, in my opinion, they've got to be schooled enough that I can, put, I can get someone else to load them. Because it comes to situations exactly like Sunday where I've got two horses that are pretty difficult and they need to be able to behave properly. So we've got Speed Point to a very good place now. He, um, uh, Louis was there, this, Mr. Gusen, Mr. Gusen was there this morning and we're happy with him. Pray for rain. If he brings what we did this, this morning to the race on Sunday, I'm confident we'll have a, a, good, a good go. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, when when horses do go to the races, that that different environment, yeah. and they all they tune to the second. Yeah, they can boil over at any time. Eh? The energy, you see, the energy's there, and it's okay for the energy to be there, especially over, for sprinters. They are balls of yes. energy. It's our job to contain that energy into the store, so let's say open gates pop. Go. But the energy mustn't be wasted before. Yeah. You know? Mark, what is it that makes you? Well, I, I'm presuming that you you're not scared of horses, but uh, we must also be careful how we use that terminology. It's, like, it's no good saying, "Well, I'm not scared of snakes," you know, and then no. somebody goes and touches a spitting cobra on the on the on the head. It would be a stupid thing to do. But uh, uh, what is it that makes you generally not scared of horses? Firstly, I think I ha- I have to be scared of horses. I mean, I am scared of horses. That's why I'm very wary of them. But um, I I connect to a horse like it's just something that I that I've got gifted you know I, I just connect on a different level to horses and i and i enjoy working through the problems with them and sometimes a lot of it's they misunderstood you know we scared of them but they just sometimes just they're scared of what's going to happen or the environment or what are we going to do so yeah i mean i've got to be scared like you say you don't want to be not scared because then you you you're resting on your laurels and you're going to get kicked in the yeah, face you just you just got to be cautious, yeah, be yeah, cautious. Yeah, because you know you get these little girls who get these Big horses off the track and they mm. start patting them on. As, as um, I think Martin Ball was saying, you know, when, when horses are led out of the, the winner's enclosure and the owner pats oh. it on the backside. And they say, oh, no, it doesn't kick. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. All horses kick. Only two horses don't kick. A dead horse and a sea horse. <laughs> 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 that's great. I think that's going to be our caption. All horses, there's only two horses that don't kick. A dead horse and a sea horse. Now... Um, what was my question, uh, Peter? Oh, I don't know, go? George. Um, how do you handle you know, if there's a, if there's on the odd occasion that you're unable to win a battle with a horse, or you go to the races and it's everything's fine up until then, and then it goes pear shaped at the pens? How do you handle personally those 
I won't say defeat. So yeah. how do you feel like, how do you handle those letdowns or those bad days? Yeah, they're not cool. Um, I, I used to struggle a lot with the, that specific thing, like putting all the hard work in, and then it comes to the day, and just the different horse arrives at the course, and it just didn't go, and the horse gets scratched at the start. Um, you know, I, I used to drink. I haven't drank for a year now, but that the, then that's how I would cope with it, is go and have a, a few dops to get it out of my mind. But now, yeah, it's part of the game. It, it must be able to take some of the failure with the, with the success, and I think that's how I've... I grow, you know, in learning how I can do. Yeah, when well you're dealing stuff. with an animal, I mean, it's, it's exactly it's not pushing yeah, buttons. Not pushing buttons, no, no for sure. Yeah, mm. I had a very good question. It's, I've slipped my mind, but I'll remember it now. Let's let's get uh, into the personal side, not personal, personal. But tell us about uh, well, you've spoken about your grandfather, your mom, but your family in general. Recently married. Yeah, um, married on in December on the twenty twenty seventh. 27th uh, after three attempts on my birthday yeah after three attempts okay because of course covid yes so uh yeah we had a lovely wedding about 50 people and yeah we're just still in the very very much honeymoon phase (laughs) very much in love keep quiet yeah (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so it's uh, just starting our lives together and it's amazing and i've got an amazing wife danielle she supports me she's uh She's a real rock in the relationship, yeah. You don't... I'm going to ignore you because uh, you keep those masks closed. He's really something to say. He's yeah. dying for something to say, especially when it comes to marriage and wedding and happiness and all the rest <laughs> of it. So we're just going to ignore him. Stick a cook in it. Yeah. You <laughs> are... You throw me under the bus. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't live in this area. You're in, in Amschlange, no, is that right? We, we stay in Amschlange. Uh, well, I do a lot of work on the north coast for the equestrian yard. So horse boxing and jump horses jumping over fillers and things like that so it's nice to be in the middle because all my wo- week's work is here and then racing on a sunday but then friday saturday i do jumping yards okay north coast the travel up uh, is no, nothing like Ach, at five a hop five in the morning it's 25 breeze. minutes it's fine yeah that's i've remembered what i wanted to say oh, i've remembered desensitizing i know what the word means but when you say you're desensitizing a horse because i saw a lovely video on your social media platforms and we'll tell everybody those social media platforms just now so they can go and look and, and learn and, and enjoy it uh what is what is desensitizing and how do you do it or what are the various ways that you can do it yeah so desensitizing in a sense is bringing a horse that's overly sensitive to be less sensitive so whether it be, let's say, ground basics. So a horse, a baby, a two-year-old that is very spooky, leaves could blow or the, the, the stable door could bang and gets a fright. So now that horse needs to go in the starting stores, which are so big. So for that horse to touch the sides, it gets a bit, it's a bit hairy for that horse. So I will use ropes on the bum to desensitize. I will use a packet to desensitize. I'll use a mop to desensitize. You can actually use any weird or funny noise making object but slowly introduce it to the horse so the horse builds confidence that okay that scary thing's not going to kill me oh well they should send you around there you make enough bloody noise i make enough bloody noise now you scare the hell out of the horses i saw one of the things that you did uh, you were in a paddock somewhere and you had like a almost like tin foily Mm. like a big tin foily sheet on the floor Mm. and you got the horse to stand on that yeah and you were rubbing your foot making all the noise around it and the horse just stood beautifully so yeah that's a a lovely little filly for the Mrs. Crawford, the Crawford uh, sisters up in Ashburton. Um, yeah, very skittish. And the plastic is a very weird object for them. So also with the horse's vision, the depth perception and the way the glean of the, of the sun on the actual sheet and then it makes a noise when you're standing on it like the crinkling packet, that's a scary thing for a horse. So yeah, you know, got it to a point where she wouldn't want to go near it. And then at the end, on top and understanding that it's not going to kill her. Because a lot of the times horses are sensitive around their feet and it's also like a miscommunication or misunderstanding that we have about horses. A lot of them can be desensitized, be very sensitive around their feet. So to desensitize them around the feet is an important part of how to desensitize a horse. What has, uh, before we, Andrew and I go through a couple of our selections here, what has been your most satisfying day or your most satisfying achievement or moment or horse to work with, in your opinion? I'm sure you've got plenty, but when did you sit back? Not that you're a... What's the word I'm looking for? Not that you're an egotistical or a vain person, but when you sat back and thought, Sherbert, that was good. Thank goodness that worked. Oh, you know, I'm, on, to be honest, I think about that every race meeting, when, sorry, whenever the horses do well. But of <coughs> um, a current, cli- current horse would be Gentleman's Way. 
he was a uh, he's on his last strike he's been a tyrant at the gates he we had him a few times loading last with uh, with the rider he would just rear up like straight in the air fall over we've got him to a point now where we load him first without the rider he loads first the rule in KZN is if you load a horse without a rider it must be a prelim load so we load him first without the rider the rider gets on as the last horse comes in and off he goes and he's I mean he's I think he's a four or five time winner now yeah, he's, no, uh, he he's done well is. I see it in, in uh, overseas a lot of the times with the difficult horses they load with the front gate open yeah and we, we can't do that here there's a lot of, uh, you know, not to get into the middle of anything, but there's a lot of um, different ways people do different things all around the world. And I think um, we're getting there. It's just, uh, you know, I've also seen some horses in France be load, load backwards and yes, yeah. it's just they do whatever it takes to get the horse inside. That's got to be the most important thing. You've got to do whatever it takes to get the horse and in. I, but I, I must just say quickly that I'll, we have a great team at the start. Because... Sorry to interrupt you, Gabe, because that's what I say. You are also, not only are you a horse behaviorist, mm. but on race day, you're yeah. also a handler at yeah. the start. I'm part of the team at the start. And I think there's a big misconception that our handling staff at the start don't do whatever it takes. And we do. It's just sometimes horses come to the races when they haven't had the right practice. They haven't been schooled properly. So they come there and it's, mm, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Ravi. Yeah, so um, they come to the race and they haven't had the basics properly. So they come there and they are a bit wound up and, and they haven't had the proper ground groundwork. So it's, it's difficult. But I must just say our starting team in KZN is really, really good. Solly has, um, Solly Mobo has done a great job. Yeah, it's, it's Solly's been around for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm glad that you mentioned that point because sometimes, you know, and I, for, I say it too, when I'm watching races around the country and around the world for that matter, you know, when I'm using my Tam World account, which knows me so well, uh, you know, you say, what are they doing at the start? You know, mm. goodness gracious me, come on, it's taking too long. Or, But I, I'm sure they're all standing behind the pens and they're doing their damn best to get the horse in the pens. You know, I mean, I don't think that everyone's standing there saying, well, let's delay the start. Let's hope this horse doesn't go in. And I think us as humans, and uh, me, I, I, as I said, I, I sometimes criticize, and I'm, I'm happy to admit that. And yeah, you're right. You're doing your best, and it's actually maybe the horse that's not playing the game because mm. the horse hasn't, and it's maybe not the horse's fault. It's the person who the horse doesn't care with. So yeah, it, it's 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 a good point that you've made. Um, I won't complain ever again about the start. <laughs> the first race. On Sunday. Michael, you enjoy your uh, vitamin juice. Are we having... Uh, Are we going to try and give a few selections we're gonna, here? We're uh, going to mislead the public. We're okay. gonna, uh, yeah. Uh, sit back, <laughs> relax, and uh, make yourself at home. Check your phone. Do what you've got to do. If you want to join us, you know of a horse that you've seen work, or you've, you're most welcome to contribute. You're most welcome to not contribute. The first race on Sunday, 11.55. Download the, t uh, download the race card online at www.goldcircle.co.za. Maiden juvenile plate over 1,200 meters, 5 to 12. Uh, download the race card online. Our race card is different division, isn't it? Oh, it is. Uh, geez, yeah, it's, I don't know about the tips, but the content's very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was that noise? I don't know. It sounded like a bloody... Like a goat, like a, like a goat, goat yeah. Dying goat mass. under the table there. <coughs> now, first race. What do you like and tell me why? And I've got Hasta Manana, I think. Uh, Hasta Manana. Manana. Gareth Van Zale, I think, and Richard Ferri. That was a good first run. Um, I think it's probably the right one. Okay, I do like Hasta Manana very strongly. Uh, I have got huge respect for number six, Round Tree or Roan Tree. That finished behind you. Uh, behind Chief Executive, yes. yes. Uh, you run in the race. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> number 14, Gimme a Prince, beautifully bred horse, could be absolutely anything. Word from the track this morning, having spent a wonderful morning at Summerfelt and still spending a lovely morning at Summerfelt. Hasta Manana is doing well. They're expecting a good run. Roundtree, doing well. They're expecting a good run. And Gimme a Prince, nice work, good horse, looking at a uh, you know, beautiful pedigree. So the first race is quite hot. And so it should be. We're in champion season. But I'm in your camp. I'm narrowly in the camp of number two, Hasta Manana. The second race is at 25 past 12, a maiden juvenile plate, 1,200 meters. Uh, another yeah, another two-year-old event. For me, let me just give you the, the business from the interviews this morning. Uh, five noble sniper and 11 noble trip are in a good space. They're hoping that they're going to run very well. Seven party time from the Miller stable. They're very confident that he's the horse they all have to beat. And number 15, incredible, Vaughan Marshall in his interview said, very nice horse. Uh, if the draw's not going to affect him, he should give a good account of himself. 
but it looks to be number seven party time. No, definitely party. I've got good travelers. Uh, ra- I was one, two in a row mm. now. Uh, one of, it's one also of mine? Yeah. Scored in the gate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's um, running in the feature, so yeah, beating a short head, party time. So that looks like the right one. Okay, let's move along then. We've given you what Andrew likes. I've given you the comments from this track. Third race. Let's see if there's any comments here. Indigo Moon for Peter Musket. Uh, a filly that's been unlucky in her last two starts. Peter feels that uh, she's going to run an absolute cracker. Seven Diamonds and Toads got a strong place chance, as has number eight Global Appeal. That's the information I picked up at the track. They've been following my tips, man. A d- <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a dreadful race. I've found a bit of value here. I like number 10, Megan, from the Yogas Governor Stable, owned by Al Kahail Breeders, the people yeah. that we were just talking about. And Samanga Kumalo rides never too far off the action. For me, I'm going to have a few places on number 10, Megan, but by no means a confident selection. What do you like? No, it's a difficult maiden plate, but I've got Indigo Moon. I think it'll, she'll get it right this time around. I've got it. Indigo Moon from Global Appeal. Okay, Indigo Moon certainly deserves to get it right, and s- Sunday could be her day. Fourth race is the first of the features, the in-full flight handicap listed event. Mm. Over 1,100 metres, 1.1 kilometres, depending how you like your distances are disseminated to you. Two no laying up, the comment from the stable, in a good space, working well, uh, got ability, as we could all see, expecting a big run. Uh, Gainsford dropping back to a sprinting distance. Uh... Quartet chance. Who else did we speak to? Uh, tempting that, fate. Uh, tempting fate. No, uh, I didn't uh, speak to, to. What you missed out? I missed out there. Uh, and traces. Peter Musket. You know, we're racing with a one cheek piece uh, can always be competitive. Tempting fate and pray for rain. Tempting fate's got no issues at the store. No, he's uh, good. It's pray for rain. So it's this pray is for rain. So pray for rain and speed point are in the fourth race. You're gonna have your hands full. That's my f- that's my busy race. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like, Andrew? I like uh, Vaughan Marshall. I think he holds a strong hand here with two no laying up and four gains for. I'm expecting a big I've, effort I've, I've from. I've got tempting fate. I think he started off his career mm. pretty well. He won the, won the gold medallion, went off a bit in Cape Town, uh, but he ran in in a, in a, a group one last time out. Huh? Um, Behind Fox Run, Fox Run, run Fox, Fox Run, Fox and Karari, the thing in one on Saturday. Rio Karari. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's I think your choice. And then Traces, I think, is drawn on the wrong side of the track. I think he likes the inside rail and he's drawn on the outside, so we'll see. Fifth race, Streletia Stakes. 10 past 2. 1,100 metres. An interesting race. The comments from the Miller Stable. Number 2, Civil Rights, is a big runner. Casa Inverno, Glenn Cotson, uh, expecting this filly to be competitive. And that's the only comments that I've got. But number eight, Hi Hosanna, is my first choice. I think she is rated, and she could end up being absolutely anything. Yeah, she started favoured on that big race, at, uh, that big juvenile race on Met Day. Uh, it's always always very competitive. I've gone civil rights. I think that was a good run. Although Miss Putin ran like a, I will say, won't say. That. <laughs> well, didn't I don't do I the form any I any yeah, favours. Put do it the form that way. Any favours, but I think the pace of the race didn't suit. But be that as it may, that's for another debate. So you've gone with civil rights. The stable are confident, but it's going to be competitive because Casa Inverno won very well. Got to have a chance. Sound of warning, Sean Terry. Uh, this horse won on debut. Could be absolutely anything. Uh, but I'm in the camp of high hosanna. Yeah. Let's move on to the sixth race, the Godolphin Barb Stakes. It's a Group Three event. <laughs> um, how good is Cosmic Highway? I think very good. Mm. I think I very think good. I think so too, yeah. That win in Cape Town, that win in Cape Town last time out was was scintillating. Yeah. The word on the ground is that Cosmic Highway is the horse to beat. Edgar Town will need the run. Good traveler. Glenn says a very good horse, very talented individual. They're going to uh, expecting a big run. Chief executive, very fast. Let's see how he goes. He's in a good space, but it's his toughest task thus far safe return will run well so there's a lot of positive talk about a lot of runners on sunday good traveler what's his problem why is is he just a claustrophobic is he edgy yeah he took you on a bit to start off uh didn't want to load in didn't want to go inside and then stand um i refreshed him this morning he's in a good space and he's uh, ready to rock and roll yeah i think cosmic highway sets the standard i've got healthy respect for safe return and I've got healthy respect for good traveller. And obviously my own horse, who we got to share in, uh, I'm just hoping that he can be into the first four, which I think he can. Yeah, possibly. But what do you like? No, I've got Cosmic Highway from Safe Return and Good Traveller. Okay, so you copied my tips. Copied your tips. <laughs> uh, Chief Executive, 
he's quick. So let's see if, uh, if we can run them off their feet and maybe he can hold on to run third or fourth. That'll be most enjoyable. The seventh race is the Poinsettia Stakes at Group 3 over 1,200 metres. A tough race. Point of sale. Quartet mm. chance. Love bomb. Spoke to Frank Robinson this morning. Blinkers on. Uh, doing well with the blinkers. Certainly got to have a chance. He's loaded with ability. But it's a tricky little race. How do you see it unfolding? Yeah, I've, I've gone th the snaith coupling of uh, keep the lights on and uh, favorita. I think those are the two you're going to beat. Okay, my but first choice. Not easy. My first choice is number nine, favorita, uh, but by no means a confident selection. The eighth race is an open a tab gold account. I've done that already. About yeah, I've got an account. It's just got no money in it. Okay. Open a tab <laughs> gold account on 031-314-1874. 86 handicap for the girls. I found a bit of a lurker here. In fact, uh, I found two, in fact, I found two lurkers. Speak. Speak up, you're through. You will. I like four Cherry Road and six Izzy Esther. Okay. Each way. Value, each way value. No good things, but those are my two lurkers. Four and six. What do you like? Put them in the quartet. I like Princess Anastasia. I think it was a good run last time. It was way, way out at the weights and nearly pulled it off. But I think she's quite good. Uh, yeah. Even though she got a hell of a bloody hiding in the handicap. I think she's good enough to win this. Let's move on. Maybe you take a three-way box exactor. Four Cherry Road, six Izzy Esther, and eight Princess Anastasia. The ninth race, the ninth and final race, is a competitive maiden. Hollywood bets bright future maiden plate over 1,500 meters. Word on the ground, uh, word on the ground, and there is no word there's on the no ground, ground, really. No, okay. <laughs> no, there's no word. There is ground, but there's no, <laughs> no word. word. Uh, well, I, I, was just, I was just w warn people who, who to look at the tips in the race card. Stop for a second. The dog's passed out. <laughs> what, did you poison it? No, no. Look at that. It? It must, they say the dogs that come to humans, like that means we're good people. Is that Molly? <laughs> uh, I don't know. What's uh, Lafferty's Lef dog's, name? dog's name? Uh, Hibri Roy. Hibri Roy. Okay, so you were saying? Okay, I t I t uh, for some strange reason, Blood Eagle came out in the selection box. I must have pushed the wrong tit somewhere along the line. Uh, oh, so have you tipped Blood Eagle? Yeah, boy. Well, lovely form. Well, can you imagine if Blood Eagle happens to win and pays 137 <laughs> rand to win? <laughs> then you'll be the hero. I think I'm a genius. Eh? Then, yeah, then you're a genius. Then yeah. you, must, you must claim it. Yeah, it's just warning. Okay, okay so oh. right now you're putting out a warning. No, you don't, don't like Blood Eagle. I don't Eagle. like Blood Eagle. Computer error. Yeah. But ha should and Blood Eagle happen to win, you, 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 oh, you, made, you made it a good <laughs> thing. You made it a good thing. I've yeah. done it before. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that you've cleared the air, which is good, thank you for that. Diasora. Uh, because don't forget, you're not allowed to make a mistake, eh? You're yeah. not allowed to make a human. No. You're, not, no, allowed no, make no, a not, you're not allowed to make a mistake. You're not allowed to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you like? <laughs> what do you seven. like here? I meant to push seven and I pushed eight. <laughs> Diasora. You like dear, dear, okay, okay. I must be honest with you. Uh, I'm, sure you'd prefer, I'd prefer, I'm sure you'd prefer me to be honest than lie. I do like Diostra, a, a big chance, big runner, but I've burnt my fingers with him in the last three runs. So I'm not going to turn my back on him. I've included him in everything. I've got him in all my bets, but I certainly won't be having a win bet on him this time. He can win without me, but he, I've got him in pick sixes, quartets, absolutely everything. I like a bit of number 15, Victory Twist. Pity we didn't get Tony Rivlin to stop and give us a comment because he's always happy to talk to he's the public. He's drawn 15. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't matter. I've seen horses win from that draw. No, so have I. Okay, so then <laughs> but it's not a problem. But, 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 <laughs> but it is a problem. It, it is it's a, a problem. Long way out. It's a long yeah. way out. So Victory Twist is my first choice. So an interesting race meeting. Will you be there on Sunday? I will be there on Sunday. Gosh, ah, well, then we're going to have rain. Oh, rain. Yeah. 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 Rain. Shoes rain. on, cars yes. driving yes. far, yeah, coming shoes. to the races. Yes. 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 It's coming, look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shoes look on. Look out the window. I'll have to Sh put shoes on. Shoes on, driving far, and coming to the races. That's a lovely yeah. trifecta. Lovely. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Mike, um, okay, well, that's... Uh, yeah, that's uh, interesting to hear. Anything else you want to add? I mean, your business, I mean, obviously, it's no good saying, well, you know, it's obviously, you know, somebody that's battling to have their kettle fixed is not going to phone you to, for business. <laughs> but, I mean, anyone in the horse racing industry that's watching this, and uh, lots of them, believe it or not, yeah. uh, from training, you know, would you travel? I mean, if, if, if somebody picked up the phone and said, oh, we've got to travel some horse, I know that there's horse behaviorists in, in the various provinces. But if for some reason somebody said, could you travel to Port Elizabeth or Kimberley or something, would you travel? Obviously, you know, if the client pays the cost, et cetera, would you go? Yeah, I mean, I uh, definitely have been, have been going before. Um, I must just say, you know, Milan, Milan is my mentor and he taught me. So 
when horses come from Cape Town to here, I'll take them on. And when horses go from here back to Cape Town that I've started here, Milan will take them on. I still speak to him nearly once a week. And we're in constant communication. If he's going to be in Joburg, then he'll do a horse for me that I'm meant to do. And yeah, so definitely am, am willing to travel. And not just racing horses, though. It's um, any horse with a problem. Uh, I feel like I can give it a proper go. Okay, you know? that's interesting. So it's not only ra horse racing, okay? No. Um, a gentleman's obviously not enjoying it. <laughs> no, he's nodding off. He's nodding off. He's obviously not enjoying mm -hmm. it. He said he had far too many. No, he's watching him. Mansburg United. No, not him. not him. Not him. The uh, assistant. Oh, the assistant. The assistant. Yeah. Yeah. Out. O U T. Out. Out. Too many black <laughs> labels last night. He tells me in the car. L V W. Out. L V W. Okay. Um, then, so okay. So that's interesting to note that it's not only racehorses. Have you got a website, horses. Mike? Not a website yet. I've got um, social media, Mark Shaw Horse Behaviorist on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. I'm yeah. telling you now, I was overheard a conversation that my wife was having with a client the other day and and it made my ears prick because they were going on about websites. Websites, you've got to have website as a must. Yes, I agree. But today, for me, Facebook and Instagram has a bigger, much bigger impact than a website. And, and she was talking to the client about that. So they thought, well, because they wanted to put all the emphasis on the website and hardly anything on Facebook and Instagram. Now it's the other way around. Right. All the Instagram and Facebook, we, uh, you know, and then a little bit on the website. So Facebook and Instagram, yeah. Mike Shaw Behaviorist. Mike Shaw Horse Behaviorist. Mike Shaw Horse Behaviorist. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, well, so I suppose the websites, that they take a bit of time to open up in these days and people yeah, haven't got the time. Time, yeah. Mm. Now, anything else you want to ask, Mike? Before we... Uh, no, I think we've got... What, what's the... What's the worst horse you've ever had to sort out? Would be it would be that horse I started with. It was called Lago Lida. I think no. I was I was inexperienced. He he had a start that again specific <laughs> routine when he loaded. Yeah, he would walk up to the gates and then go on his back legs rear, and I used to anticipate that every time he'd walk up rear, let him come back down, pick the stick up, and in he went every single time. And Solly was in Joburg then, yeah. those days. So Solly remembered the horse. And I said, yeah, he's, we used to wait for him, load him like third last, walk up rear like a big dog, get down, and then walk okay. in. So he was probably the hardest because I was still inexperienced yeah. and um, yeah, and still learning. And if, if I knew now what I, what I knew if then, it would be a different story, yeah. I think, you know. Behind the start, I mean, is it, uh, I mean, the jocks, we all know, you know, it's, 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 a, it's an edgy game. Can it get a bit heated behind the start? Yeah, well, I mean, on, when it's pressure horses, you know, jockeys and everyone feels the pressure differently. But when it comes to loading them on pressure horses, this one must go, that one must go, try and, you know, get an extra little advantage by loading a little bit later. And uh, it, it's all in the name of sport, though. You yeah, know? Sure. Um, Who's the bravest jockey? <laughs> <laughs> They're all brave. They're all brave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, um, no, I must just say, behind the stores on big race meetings is the greatest place to be. Like the season is here. I am pumped. I, I love the features. I love leading around big horses. Uh, last weekend with Rainbow Bridge, it was just magnificent to be around, you know? With so, such good so, horses. So you, uh, you, did you actually lead by Rainbow Bridge? Well, I mean, were you with Rainbow Bridge behind no, the No, I pen? was Golden Ducat that okay, race. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's a hood, hood hold, query hood. So, yeah, it just, it's nice to be around him. You know, I'm, a ra I'm born up yeah. and bred racing yes. since I was yeah. 18 months you know, old. A lot of people so don't understand the way you, you know, they think racing is just a... Uh, like a sausage machine, yeah. you know, but it's, it's not. A, it's just people it's love blood. their horses, it's yeah. yeah. And when you get a, a really good horse, mm. you have to make some very hair stand yeah, it up. Does. It yeah, does. It does. It's phenomenal. Does. Yeah, it certainly does. Okay, well, uh, I think that's uh, that's a wrap. Uh, there's nothing else, Mark. Yeah, just we wish you all the best. We thank you for your time. We thank you for all the work that you do. The one last question I was going to ask that I've just remembered now, as well. Uh, two things. Sorry, is, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, Oh. As we asked, as we asked uh, Glenn the other day, you know, yes, you guys are in. Both of you are based in KZN. You both run your own businesses. You are both individual people, but the two of you seem to get on well. You gel. You are both starters, and mm. and and you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, we we, we there's there's enough work to go around, and um, Glenn and I are mates, and he, he may have done a horse that I end up doing, and he I'll do a horse that he ends up doing. So we just communicate it, and on race day we work together as a team. Um, to make sure all the horses load. So yeah, Glen Glen Bob, Glen Bob as we call him. Glen Bob. Yeah, or Glen or the guys at Glen Fittish. 
Didn't finish. <laughs> no, he's a good man. Yeah, good man. Now, uh, lastly, to close up, is I remember the other day, Lowen Donation had a winner called Alfredo, Alfredo. I think. Yeah. And, sure. and, you know, you always see Mike in the ring and, and you see him there jumping onto the bucky and, they go, uh, you know, and I re- that particular day, I remember seeing him there and I remember seeing him there and next minute, boom, the horse came back, he was there and the next minute in the first box, he was there and he was everywhere and, and quite rightly so. And when we did that interview, it was actually such a great moment because, not because I chose to do the interview, the great moment was that he was there and I said to the TV crew, we're getting interview the jockey, we're going to interview the trainer and we're interviewing the horse behaviorist mm. because... That win meant you could Oof. see you literally had tears in your mm. eyes. I mean, that was a that big was a moment. tough one actually. That that was a tough one. He he was a tough horse. That took about a good on good on pl- off on and off seven months. That horse, is he he walked into the gates the one day and the and the, the the back gates closed at an angle like that, at an angle like that. So the one gate closed and the other one didn't, and it closed on his flank, and he wailed like an and like a buck was being eaten by a lion, like a wail of pain. And it took me, we tried passing him at the races, we took him to board him, we, we did him at Ashburton, we did him at both pens, we took him to races twice, three times to practice him there and try and pass him there. And eventually we got him going and only now it seems like he's actually getting confidence, ju- not just about the pens but about racing. Because before he would go and just like very green, didn't know what was going on and now he's... he's and, and Mark, they, they obviously can't, but when I say bend the rules, you can't, I mean, you've got to, the starter's got to be for the animal the safety, mm. the, 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 the jockey safety, you can't bend the rules. So it has to be, you know, if, if you take a horse six times and it fails at the races, he's going to just have to keep failing until he gets it right because you can't, the point is you, there's, no, there's no room for error. Yeah, you've got to draw the line. I think th- um, the parameters that the, the starting like Solly and, and, and Mr. Moodley, the parameters that they set is a goal for us to work at. So if, if your horse doesn't meet those, those um, parameters at the time, well, then you must keep doing it until you get it right because okay. that's the standard. If you move that line, yes. then, it's, then it's been moved for anyone. You yeah. know what I mean? Then yeah. it becomes tricky. Yeah, yeah well, it becomes free for all. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, we'll be at Hollywood Bet Scottsville on Sunday. Andrew, she's, uh, Andrew, myself, and Mike Shaw will be there. So uh, get your bets on. There's a question being raised. No, I'll be at Scottsville as well. Oh, oh uh, Tawanda will be at Scottsville. Sure Can you believe it? I think we might as well stay at home. Boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stay at home. <laughs> Tawanda's there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, thanks to you for thanks your time. Thanks for having and, me. Yeah, yeah. I know you're busy, really busy, great. and uh, up and down, and nice to chat to you and touch base and share Third your knowledge lucky. with everybody. Third time lucky. No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no problem. And thanks for, as we said to Glenn, for all the hard work that you guys do to look after our horses. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks, gents. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been good. Bozzy, no, good we're, go, we're going the down the hill to the um, office to go do a few things. And then uh, we'll be at Hollywood Bets Scottsville on Sunday for some top quality racing. Be safe. Be nice. Be nice when you're giving your opinions. And we'll see you, as always, in the number one box from the entire team. Punt well.